On Nationwide this evening, the world of writing as a business. We meet those who have written books and who are finding new ways of getting their book published and into readers' hands. Plus, we meet a Kildare woman who has started a business bringing children's books to market and who hopes to someday make cartoons of her series of stories. Good evening, you're very welcome to Nationwide. This evening on the programme, we're giving you the chance to win €5,000 in cash. So have pen and paper at the ready as we'll be giving you the details later in the programme. This evening, we're focusing on writers and writing, people who spend weeks and often months working alone, dreaming up ideas to make works of fiction or biography. From time to time on Nationwide, we meet writers of all kinds of books. Some have written biographies, some works of fiction and especially illustrated books for children. And then there are those whose works of poetry are also works of art, with the writers working closely with illustrators. Recently, we met the former model and flight attendant Mairead O'Gorman, who in retirement started writing her books for children all about the birds that visit her garden. All have had varying degrees of success with their publications and all say that social media has been a huge help in spreading the word of their books and helping to drive sales here at home and abroad. It seems these are good times with lots of opportunities for anyone who thinks that they have a book in them and want to bring it to market. For any new writer, getting their work published is a huge achievement, but for many others, getting the books onto bookshelves or even online can be hugely daunting. This was the case with one Irish writer who, out of frustration, came up with a novel solution, bringing readers and writers together in a unique website. But then, Rachel Drury has always been a person to look for the positives in life, as Mary Hart found out when she visited her at her home in County Sligo. Moving to live under Ben Bulban's head on the idyllic seascape of Sligo has been a journey of perseverance, determination and deep love for Rachel Drury and her partner Des Flanagan. It's a journey that began in 2014 when Rachel was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Her world was turned upside down. A qualified engineer, she'd found her dream job in Australia and there too, the man of her dreams. I was working on solar farms in Australia. So I was based in Sydney doing quite a bit of travel uh, with the job, but I loved it. I loved the people I worked with. And yeah, it was amazing when I was there because I ended up meeting Des, who today is my fiance. I was from Sligo and he was from Roscommon. I loved that I had met Des. Um, I had such a lovely group of friends and that was all a positive part of my life. But I suppose, unfortunately, I was diagnosed at the time with a condition called ulcerative colitis and it just took a toll on me. Um, it took a toll quite rapidly and quickly, actually, with weight loss. Along with the colitis came another condition, um, arthritis, and I have that actually, um, that I have that in my spine. I knew in the back of my head somewhere that I would overcome, you know, both of them in my own way and in my own time. And yeah, that I would, I would still have a good life, even though um, it was going to be a different life. Eventually in 2018, Rachel and Des decided to return to Ireland. They found a house in Sligo close to where Rachel grew up and where there would be a support network of family and friends. Woo! Thanks. That'll warm you up. Thanks. Rachel's twin sister, Michelle, is now a frequent visitor to their home in Kearney. How are you? Yeah. Having her closer is, is, is it's, a, it's a lovely feeling because it feels, yeah, to be able to see her and help out where I can. A lot of people say, oh, do you feel the same? Like, you know, things because you're twins. Well, you know, we definitely feel like when each other is up and down. And so when I see her in her, you know, uh, happiness and she's like passionate about something, you know, I feel we're, that also affects me in some ways and vice versa. And, you know, I'll come over and we could be here for hours. Poor Des, like, is like, please hey, ever stop talking. And, yeah, so we, we, we share a lot now. It's, uh, you know, it's, 
and I'm very, very proud of her and to think, yeah, she's done amazing. Rachel's determination not to let her illness defeat her led to her writing her first self-help book, Power to Fall, Empowered to Rise, based on the positives that can emerge from life's struggles. It was the beginning of yet another journey for her. The book I ended up writing was, was, was very different to my personal story, actually. Um, it was more just looking back and thinking, what did this illness teach me? What does it teach me? What perspective have I gained because of it? Um, is there anything positive I can take from it? You know, now it took me a long time to see it as a positive experience because when you're in hospital and you're in bed and you've left your job, they're very low and dark times, but I felt all of a sudden that it was through those dark times that I gained a new appreciation for things that I hadn't had before. And that was very much my message, um, especially in 2020 when I knew people were going through a very difficult time. And exactly like I had been through, their lives had changed overnight and all of a sudden they weren't able to plan the things that they had wanted to. And I knew that that was the time to put the book out there. Rachel's book was a huge success, so much so that stocks quickly sold out, prompting her to question why book sales and supplies were so difficult to control for the authors. And I remember thinking, why is there not an Irish website that I can sell my book on? So I, I started off initially contacting some authors online and I got such lovely feedback from them because they were exactly like myself. They were looking for an Irish website to sell their book. With the help of Des, a software engineer, they developed a unique website that links customers directly with the author, who then packages and distributes the book themselves. The knock-on effect of this has been the creation of a whole community of authors interacting with each other. Since it launched in October 2021, buythebook.ie has now over 50 authors on its site. Myself and Rachel sat down and we came up with a list of requirements uh, for both the authors selling their book and customers buying the book. Uh, a big goal uh, from Rachel from the very start was that the author needs to get the majority of the royalties for their sales and we've achieved that. Yeah. We launched the website in uh, October 2021 um, and immediately it, was, uh, it changed by the book and changed Rachel's business. The authors have become close friends with Rachel, albeit online unable to meet because of COVID restrictions. Rachel. But today, one of her new friends has travelled to Sligo to meet her for the first time. He's writer and former RTE correspondent, Lane Cahill. If you write a book, it means that you either have a story that you want to tell people, um, or that you have a passion about something and you want to share that passion with them. And if you can't get into the shops and if the wholesalers won't take your books, you know, other than standing out at the crossroads in your village, how are you going to share the passion with the people? So this is what Buy the Book uh, does for me and for other author authors. And it's because Rachel herself has that passion for books and for writing and, and for authors. I mean, it's a win-win for both the writers and the readers. I'm grateful to Rachel, but I'm so inspired by her as well, too. For Rachel, the inspiration is the landscape around her, her family, and a determination to succeed in whatever challenge she sets for herself. Now, although I mightn't be able to, you know, walk as far as I want to, it's, it's okay, <laughs> because I can still leave the house and I can still get out. And if I can sit in a wall, I can take it in. I take small steps, but it's more important for me to take those steps and have the right attitude than to be defeated by this. And I've got an amazing partner in Des who supports me and does take the, the dogs for the walks that they need. Even today, with my sister and I like held on to her and I walked with her, you know, I have that support around me um, with my family and with Des, so for that I'm grateful.
Well done to Rachel and all she has achieved so far. Well, you might have noticed that Liam Cahill is one of the authors whose books are sold on Rachel's website. Well, sadly, since the filming of that report, Liam Cahill has passed away. The teacher had a long phone conversation. In his lifetime, Liam Cahill worked in many areas and achieved great things. In recent years, he concentrated on history and writing after a varied career in media, politics and public affairs. He joined RTE News in 1979, where he was both an economics correspondent and political correspondent. Over his 11 years at RTE, he also made documentaries and was a regular contributor to Irish language programming. He then worked in public relations for both AIB and Intel, served as a Director of Communications for the Labour Party and was also a Special Advisor to the Minister for the Environment, Alan Kelly and others. He also founded and edited the popular GAA website, Unfar Rua. Over the last few years, Liam turned his energies more to writing, publishing several books, including Forgotten Revolution, The Limerick Soviet, 1919. His most recent book, From Shur to Harama, shed light on the story of an Irish volunteer in the Spanish Civil War. And our deepest sympathies to the family and friends of Liam Cahill, er yeshde gorebe anam. Now it's competition time for you at home. It is the summer and we want to celebrate by giving you the chance to win a massive 5,000 euro by the end of the week. You can spend the money as you please. You can pay off some bills, book a summer trip or simply save it all. What you do with the money is completely up to you. Independence Day is celebrated in America on what date? Is it July the 1st, July the 4th or July the 10th? If you know the answer, call 1517 71 71 15 or text the word nation followed by your answer and name to 57117. Calls from the air network will cost two euro and three cent. Calls from other networks may be higher. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines close at midday on Monday the 11th of July. Further details are on rte.ie forward slash competitions where the lucky winner will also be revealed and the very best of luck to you. After the break, we meet a Kildare woman who has been busy bringing children's stories to a whole new generation of readers. Stay with us. You're welcome back to Nationwide, where this evening we're meeting writers. Now, the parents of very young children often fire their young ones' imaginations with stories of animals and magical places. And if you're looking for such stories in an Irish landscape with native flora and fauna and fables, the Johnny McGorry stories might just be what you're looking for. Valerie Waters went to County Kildare to meet a writer who doesn't have to go very far to find inspiration for her imagination. This is the home office in the County Kildare garden of Emma Jane Leeson. It is where Emma Jane writes her self-published children's books known as the Johnny McGorry series. I live here in Balnafa in County Kildare and we're really, really lucky because literally right next door across the hedge is Special Area Conservation Balnafa Lake. Um, so we'd be over there quite a lot and then of course we have this forest here then, so it's our family land. We're really lucky, we're quite in a bubble here, we always have been, but my parents live up the road, my sister's right next door, obviously our, our girls, like the kids and all, they're always been together. So. From a COVID point of view and when the pandemic sat, not a whole lot changed for us, but we are incredibly lucky. And I know a lot of people haven't got the same type of story, but I think we're kind of used to living in isolation <laughs> out here as it was, you know, and having our little bubble has been great. I've got three kids, so I've got Lily, who's the eldest, and she's just 16, well, she's just 17. Jeannie, actually, can be, she's just 17 now. And then Evan, my stepson, is 14. And then we have the goose, as we call her, so Layla. Layla's gone seven there now. 
I am obsessed with the outdoors. <laughs> I would live here if it wasn't so cold. Um, but no, I have a huge passion for Irish wildlife. Um, so and just biodiversity and nature and everything. So, but always have um, all of our family do. So, mum and dad, I suppose, had a very outdoorsish upbringing, and they like instilled that in us as well. Like you know, so everything from picking your hazelnuts and your conkers every year to mushrooms, or if not, just basically outside and helping any wounded wildlife or whatever it is. So. It is huge, it's such a passion of mine, and that's basically what goes into the books. <laughs> The stories are inspired by the stories Emma Jane heard in her own childhood. Many Irish people have heard the line, I'll tell you a story about Johnny McGorry. Now Emma Jane Leeson has taken the character Johnny McGorry and put him into her books. The stories are set by lakes, forests, and in the various beauty spots around Ireland. The illustrations are by Kim Shaw, except the Forest Fla Kion book, which was illustrated by Don Conroy. The books are printed in County Mayo. I am, through the books, reliving my own childhood <laughs> with like my own kids and with my nieces and nephews and my cousins and the whole lot. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> Mr Badger greets him with his usual friendly grin. We're having a forest party. Won't you come and join in? Now, Johnny loves to party and he loves to sing and dance. He knows he has to be back for lunch, but he can't miss this chance. So deeper into the forest they go with Mr Badger behind until Johnny's sparkling eyes sees the biggest party you'll ever find. When we paid a visit to Emma Jane, she took us to various places around her family home so that we could get a glimpse of what the stories are like. The camper van in the book of Irish legends is fondly known as Tizzy. Everyone knows that Ireland is full of myths, legends and magic places. A landscape steeped in histories with castles, tombs and famous faces. A holiday on the Emerald Isle is really something like no other. So hurry up, says Lily Mae, packing up Tizzy with her big brother. They get out their map and make a plan to visit every province in Ireland. We we'll see Ulster, Connacht, Munster and Leinster, says Johnny. It'll be grand. Now Johnny loves to talk and share up made up stories from his count. But Daddy warns, no tall tales, son. Instead, we learn about each town. The game of rounders is very popular in Emma Jane Leeson's family. So much so, it has also made it into one of her books. They hear cheering in the distance and it sounds like tons of fun. They're having a game of rounders with batters, bases and the rest. Lord Stag is the pitcher, with Miss Squirrel on his back. Teamwork at its best. Woof, woof, it's time to go. Mammy's yelling for them. Oh no, says Johnny, I'm going to be in trouble again. Emma Jane Leeson's working background is in human resources. Up to recently, she has worked for companies such as Bordnemona, the Central Bank and Kerry Group. While working in the corporate sector, she wrote her first three books. Now this is what she does full time and has big plans for the future. I approached the local enterprise office then in Kildare, so the Kildare Leo, and they were just fantastic. I suppose there was the initial challenge of saying to them that I'm not a writer, you know, like because I suppose they were kind of like the writers go to the Arts Council. So I suppose it was more like, no, I see this as a business. My bigger plan is an animation series and a global animation series at that, not just, you know, something quite niche and Irish. So, um, yeah, so I approached the local enterprise office and then I have been on so many courses. It's, I've just been incredibly lucky. It has just been such a learning phase over the last few years. It's been incredible, but it was the best jump I ever made. I'm delighted. The big plan for Johnny McGorry has always been and has never changed to be an animation series. So um, so my daughter Lily would have sat at the kitchen table with her unos dos tres speaking Spanish, expecting iguanas to be out in the garden, etc. And I always thought from the outset, why on earth can't kids across the world say a hey, hand a tree and expect a pine marten or a badger or whatever it is outside. So 
I got paired up with Ian uh, Hamilton and Elk Studios in Dundalk and we are now working together basically at creating our trailer. So we got our first round of funding from Screen Ireland there in March and now we basically get to go ahead and make the Johnny McGorry trailer series and it's fantastic because we had to design all of our characters and everything again. So, so I suppose in terms of keeping it going, our animation series will be coming probably in another two to three years. I didn't realise how long it takes. <laughs> but uh, but anyways, we're working towards that. But then in the interim, there's still a good, I don't know, 10 or 15 Johnny McGorry stories, you know, like kind of coming as well in terms of our books. Emma Jane Leeson's business partner is Amanda Delaney. She is one of a team of people who keep the Johnny McGorry brand in business. Amanda is, the, as I call her, the queen of organisation, so she keeps the whole show on the road and it absolutely be lost without her there, basically. Just making sure that everything's intact and then telling me to pipe down and keep my ideas <laughs> you know, a bit normal. <laughs> Johnny McGorry is though, a full family business, basically, so I definitely do not do this on my own. So, uh, so I, I know I've been talking about my parents an awful lot and they have been just a massive support. But my husband, Dave, is a legend, <laughs> basically. So uh, he's pretty shy. He won't come on and talk or anything like that here, but he is the one that does all of the work in the background and it's himself. And then like my, my brother-in-law as well does loads of work around the place and building and my brothers and my sisters as well. Johnny and Lily May love helping out their grandparents every year. Everyone has special jobs to do on the farm that they love so dear. Daddy and Grandad, with their good neighbour Jim, drive the tractors in the field, harvesting the wheat, oats and barley in the combine, gathering up the yield. She's one of uh, four children. We have th three girls and she's the middle girl, as she often pointed out, and we've one son younger than her. But um, she was always the one that was uh, taught outside the box. You know, the others probably would behave a lot better than her growing up. She was always the tomboy of the family growing up, but she's absolutely a darling and there's nothing she wouldn't do for us. And she's, you know, always there checking up on us to make sure we're OK and all that. But uh, she's wonderful and I've no doubt we'll see her name in lights at some stage in the future. And so the story of Johnny McGorry is now being told to this generation of young children in Ireland. Here's hoping the children in faraway places will hear of him too, as Emma Jane Leeson forges ahead with pursuing her dream of a global animation series before too long. Bringing the stories of Johnny McGorry to a whole new generation of young readers. A reminder now of our competition. If you would like to win that €5,000 in cash, simply answer this question. Independence Day is celebrated in America on what date? Is it July the 1st, July the 4th or July the 10th? If you know the answer, call 15 17 71 71 15 or text the word nation followed by your answer and name to 57117. Calls from the Air Network will cost two euro and three cent. Calls from other networks may be higher. You must be over 18 to enter. Lines close at midday on Monday the 11th of July. Further details are on rte.ie forward slash competitions, where the lucky winner will also be revealed. And good luck to one and all in the competition. And that brings us to the end of this evening's programme. Thanks indeed for watching. From all of us on the Nationwide team, bye-bye. On Wednesday's Nationwide, Crafts and Craftspeople, we meet a Kerry man with a passion for old furniture which was made in the kingdom years ago and who is a dab hand at restoration. That, of course, will be Wednesday at 7 here in one. Next tonight, the tables are well and truly turned. And Phil is at the receiving end of a sinister warning in EastEnders. And later, the Brennan brothers are back, bigger and bolder than ever, with a new hour-long episode of At Your Service at 9.35.